Yes. Nothing here. No. I'm going to lie and cheat, so don't trust me. If you just do that, it'll look like the card changes, which is a little bit weird. Mark, Larry, welcome back. It is so nice to see you guys again. We are having a little bit of talk about Komodo 3, your newest baby, if I may say so. Um, thanks for taking the time for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, um, Larry, we had an interview already. Uh, it's, a, been a, it's been a while, but we have been talking about a lot of things, especially about Komodo 2. And we have been on the live stream. So if you're watching this down below in this article, you can see the video of our live stream segment where I was asking some couple of questions too. But um, now it is your time to talk. I just, in a, in a bigger nutshell, and both of you, um, let's start with Larry. What is the biggest difference between Komodo 2 and Komodo 3? Well, it's not one thing. It's, it's a whole bunch of little things. It, it, uh, the neural net structure has been changed, which makes the, the neural net itself is, is a lot better. Uh, so that's part of it. And uh, we constantly are changing the search algorithm to make it uh, more efficient, shall we say. Uh, and the, the net result is uh, something like a hundred ELO improvement, although the exact amount depends on the time limit and the what opening book you use and so forth. But but it's it's in that ballpark of a hundred ELO, um, which is uh, pretty huge, you know, when you're already at uh, something like thirty six hundred or whatever level. Uh, so we, we're getting to the point now where the the programs. It, the way I, I try to explain it to people, they, they ask me things like, you know, well, it, or it, uh, is it playing perfectly or is it close to perfect or how far, how much can it get better? That kind of question. And, and, and the way I like to explain it is in one sense, it's almost perfect. And, the, and that one sense is that it's almost perfect in that it plays well enough that if it has, if you have a good machine and enough time, it it will pretty much never lose a game unless you make it play a bad opening. If it can play whatever opening it wants, or or if you limit it to the openings that the world champions play, it'll probably almost never lose a game. Now, no, I don't mean that too literally. You know, if you played a million games, maybe you maybe you would lose a game, but it's almost unbeatable. But that's that's not at all the same as playing perfectly because playing perfectly implies that you will always win if there's a way to win. Like if your opponent makes a mistake and there, there, there's some way to win, no matter how difficult you'll, you would always find it. And it also means that you would never make a losing mistake, even in a very, very bad position, if you're not actually already losing. So, we're not at all close to that point yet. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of room to improve it, but it doesn't show up much if you just play games against itself or against other top engines with, with their free choice of openings with long time limits because they just draw all the games. Hmm. Sure. So that, that's why, that, in other words, each later version of Komodo is much better in positions that are not obviously drawn but they're not much better in the initial position, which is pretty clearly drawn. Mm. Okay, I think I understand. Mark, do you want to add something? Uh, I just just to mention a feature of a lot of chess programs, contempt, and uh, so you know that's part of the strategy of playing a game is yeah. is you know who your opponent is. If you're playing against someone who's weaker, you would generally have a higher contempt value, which contempt effectively boosts. The evaluation of the program for itself so it thinks it's doing better than it really is because you know the opponent is weaker he's probably going to make a mistake so you know you can you can increase elo by doing that knowing that where if contempt was zero the program would just more quickly go for a repetition draw or or whatever earlier in the game because it can't see it's making any progress so um the contempt would allow the program to actually you know play continue playing even though its score was less than zero, less than a draw value, 
because it, it assumes the opponent's going to eventually screw up. So that kind of play is important when we get into things like odds play, where we're playing against grandmasters trying to even up the game by, you know, taking away one of dragons knights or whatever. Um, so, but it's just strategy that people would use also in playing the game. So there's probably more that could be done along those lines with computers. Uh, since now you can, you know, take off a lot of material on the board and the program will still do well against you. So, but, you know, to compensate for this, people don't want to just always be beaten. So we have a auto skill feature in Dragon that greatly lowers its ELO. We've been trying to, Larry's done a lot of tuning and trying to make progress on that. Sorry for the ringing. Um, about the, uh, about trying to make it play more realistically for uh, a human against a human. So, and the auto skill is set so that it would allow you to win about two out of three games. The idea being that you want to win more than you lose. So you don't feel too disappointed, but you still want it to be a challenge. <laughs> so I think it's kind of an interesting feature. Uh, the programs are just so strong now you want to learn from them, but you also don't want to always be crushed every game. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I should just add that there that the that, that is another fairly major change between Dragon 2 and 3 in that not forgetting about the auto skill, just the skill levels themselves uh, are much better tuned and they're more human-like. The, the, the way the Dragon 2 worked, um, the skill levels tended to be like too strong in the middle game and too weak in the end game. But I think we fixed that in Dragon 3 so that they're more, like if you set it to 1800 or whatever your ELO is, it'll be more more like an 1800 throughout the game instead of instead of 2000 and then 1600 you know yes yes now this human touch is one of the things i wanted to point out one of uh, the most um, and maybe you can talk about this a little bit more my question is because i was testing i was playing around with komodo 2 i was playing with uh, komodo 3 and um, as you mentioned also in your uh, uh, earlier interview and when we had the live stream that um, Komodo 3 is one of the most huma hum human like, <laughs> not humane, also humane probably, but more very humane, <laughs> human like um, chess programs uh, out there. And um, I wonder how you managed to put this in this direction that you can have so much fun with an over strong chess program as a human player. Well, I, I think there's a couple of answers to that. For, first of all, just the fact that we have NNUE makes it a lot more human. Be, not, not because NNUE itself has anything to do with human play, but because NNUE works on the principle of what, what is the best move in similar positions. Mm -hmm. And that's the same principle that humans use. So and just by using NNUE, it makes it seem a lot more human. Okay. But, but then as opposed to comparing it to some other program, and in particular, if you compare it with Stockfish, um, I mean, Stockfish is a very good program, but we, we don't, at least I, I don't think they did the, the human simulation of the ELO ratings in a good way. The way that we, we did it in a completely different way. The way they did do it is basically it makes them the human, the, the, the ELO setting play worse and worse positionally, mm -hmm. but not so much worse tactically. So I, like a, if you set it for 2000 ELO, it might play 1400 positionally and 2600 tactically or something like that. And, and that's, that, that's no, I don't see the point. And why, I don't think anyone would want that. So yeah. we, we, we do it in a way that where we lower both the tactical and the positional uh, level as as the elo is set lower and lower and i try to blend them in the right way now whether it's i'm sure i don't get it exactly right but at least at least we're making the effort you know we're, we're trying to i think another reason it plays more human-like is that it the neural networks were initially trained on on older komodo and um, uh, larry has been working on computer chess for many years and for grandmaster and and that greatly influences that older evaluation. So I think some legacy left over from that has helped it. Um, you know, we'll look at other programs and look at the numbers and Larry will say, 
those numbers are insane. It's completely crazy. <laughs> you know, no, no human would believe that. So I, I, that has influenced the, at least evaluation of the program and to some degree the search also. So I, I think having a real grandmaster on the team, Larry has helped make it a little bit more human. He teaches a lot of chess and uh, has written a lot of chess books and so on. I think all of that enters into his understanding of chess and his influencing what we do in the engine. So when you're talking about um, Larry is doing a lot of this and Mark, you're doing a lot of that, um, like for a dumb person like me, can you explain to me how it looks like you're waking up in the morning and you say, oh, it's time to work on some Komodo 3 action and then you're typing in some code, you're trying to figure out, you're putting on the computer, it is calculating, calculating, you take all the stuff and then you have a result. How can I imagine how you guys are working on it because it must touch loads of different facets i can imagine well uh yeah of course it depends on what it is we're working on but like a, a typical thing might be uh i mean just for example like uh right before we started this this broadcast um so we were discussing something to do with the, extending checks in Komodo. Uh -huh. So we, we were talking about that and we, and we discussed different ways to modify our current rules. And we agreed on some scheme that we wanted to try that's never been tried as far as we know by anybody. And uh, well, it was time to start the show. So I don't think Mark did it yet, but, it, but that he would, the next thing he would do would be, he would code it and I would start the tests to see if it was better or worse than the old way. Okay. Oh. I mean, it's important to keep the machines busy and we have, I don't know, a dozen machines or something that are constantly playing chess. Yeah. So, you know, overnight you put on longer time controls so you can get deeper searches to make sure that whatever change you made still scales well. But uh, Larry is the chief bottle washer and tester. And uh, so he, he, he keeps those machines running nice. about half the machines or so are being tested in on neural networks so we're constantly another person on the team is constantly developing neural networks and training them and you know you get a whole batch of them when you when you do a neural network you get different generations and you try them and see if you found one that's better than our best so far so about half the machines are doing that and the other half are trying our ideas of course when when one or the other isn't needed for the other tasks they all are doing the same thing okay so And we have a couple of machines that are going to be used by the guy who's doing the opening book for the World Computer Chess Championship. So uh, he'll be using those. So, Gee. Um, when we're talking about electrons. Sorry, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. But uh, yeah, when we're talking about computers, um, I see a lot of title players or grandmasters or even the amateur player who is going to a tournament. They have their laptop just like Larry right now. And it's a I, I don't want to assume that your laptop is old, but they have their laptop since five to 10 years already. And they always use uh, Chessbase on it and their computer programs. And then in the evening, they analyze the games. Now, uh, if, if I am correct, the neural network also means that uh, the GPU is not used that thoroughly anymore. It's more about the CPU. How, how, big of a difference is it actually to use Komodo 3 on a very old laptop or with a more or less high-end system right now or an up-to-date system with everything? It's like buying a new laptop, basically, because if we do 100 ELO gain in a year, that is way more than doubling the speed of your laptop. So it's like getting one twice as fast each year. I'm not trying to sell things. I'm just saying the recent progress in computer chess has been remarkable in terms of strength gaining from year to year. So instead of buying the laptop, it's cheaper to get a program or get an update, whether it's from us or some other program you can get off the internet because um, they the progress has been just phenomenal, so. Okay, Larry, you want to add something to that too, or? No, for, uh, okay, one one little point. Um, as long as your computer is n is newer than the year 2013, it should run our, our NNUE software pretty well. But the, there was a big change in the computers in that year. 
So that, that you know, older it'll still run even with, you can still get a version that'll run on the older ones, but I, I would recommend at least not, not, not older than that. Well, it's like 30% <laughs> slower, but if you gain 100 E lower a year, that's more than 30%. So. <laughs> right. But oh. of course, any, anything that's older than 2013 would not only be slower by the 30%, but it'd also be slower by another factor of two or three because of the progress that's in the subsequent mm -hmm. years. Um, Mark, can I ask you for a favor, please? Because Certainly. during our live stream, I was gone. And a day later, I checked our video and I saw some absolutely incredible magic tricks is this one of your hobbies or what the heck it was really good can't you show us a magic trick out of uh, nowhere maybe nowhere um <laughs> what do i have some cards some cards oh luckily i, have I some almost cards always have cards. cards sitting around i don't i don't know that this will look any good or not let me can you stand up i can't tilt the camera so you can see it oh Oops. right oh, oh hang on i just so this wasn't prepared I at all anything. i swear no but this man just has cards on the table i have cards all the time i just keep <laughs> can, can you still see me i can't i've lost my zoom i can i can still see you luckily yes why, why am i oh there it is it, it got behind something else, okay so. uh all right so here this is a, a fairly simple thing um so i'll just you know, nothing here yes nothing here no i'm gonna lie and cheat so don't trust me you just do that it'll look like the card changes which is a little bit weird but yeah the, the stranger thing is if you if you do it a second time no is it up high enough i it's i, I keep going out of the frame i apologize that's fine but that's if fine. you wave like this all of the cards actually turn over which is even stranger don't know why are you kidding me yes <laughs> <laughs> real quick one i'll just stand back a little bit more so you have a tilt it down so you can see okay very hard for me okay so pack of cards i'm going to take about i don't know about half the cards and i'm going to turn them face up and then i'll mix them into the other half like this okay well, they're going together like that so when you do this you have cards facing this way and that way and back to back and front to front but if you just wave your hand over them They'll all turn so they're facing the same way again. No one knows why. I cannot believe that. <laughs> okay. So, Larry, I, I'm pretty sure you've seen all of Mark's card tricks already in the last years, I assume. Or was the, is this the first time you witnessed this too? No, I've seen him do tricks. I certainly haven't seen him do all of it. I, I have no idea how many he has, but I've seen many of them, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this no, he's, is he's a good magician, yeah. That is a really good magician. This is unbelievable. So my, this... my job as a magician is like a politician to lie and cheat. I, okay, I that <laughs> that has okay, that that uh, hits the spot nicely. Thanks for getting us some insight in Komodo 3 for you at home. Um yeah, this was like a little bit of a reminder. Komodo 3 is still available and it's out there and these young men here have done a lot of good stuff for this so thanks for being here and I hope I see you latest with Komodo 4 <laughs> bye bye okay bye bye, bye, -bye.